How's it going guys? Still May 18th, 11.44 p.m. here on the East Coast. So this one will be titled, Everybody Wants to Be a Director. Um, what I'm noticing in this business um, uh, world, um, even in the military, that everybody wants to be a director. Everybody wants to, everybody has a great idea. Everybody wants to you to do, um, or let me, yeah, I wrote it down. Everybody's got a good idea on, on how you can do your job better. Um, and I find this very um, important today um, that everybody wants to be a director, but nobody wants to take on the responsibility. Um, and I find that um, very interesting. Um, and when you're put, I remember um, very clearly as I was thrown into. Um, I was in a WLC, which is Warrior Leader course. And it's your first leader course that you take as a leadership course that you take um, when you're going from E4 to E5, from specialist or corporal to sergeant um, in the Army. You have to take this course. It's called Warrior Leader course, and it's a couple weeks long, and um, the highest position you can reach within that uh, Warrior Leader course, um, it's structured so... Um, you can learn how things are done from a leadership standpoint. So you'll have a, uh, from the basic uh, squad leader, which is in charge of a squad. Um, below that, you have a team leader, which is in charge of the particular team. So you may have two team leaders to a squad. And you have the squad leader who's in charge of your particular squad. And then you have a platoon leader who's in charge of the platoons. Um, so they're in charge of all of the squad leaders, the squad leaders are in charge of the team leaders, um, and then in charge of all the platoon leaders is a first sergeant. Um, so they went through a rotational uh, period where they would establish different leadership roles as you're going through this uh, warrior leadership course. Uh, WLC um, is what they called it when I was in it. I don't know if they changed the name, um, but I know it was called something uh, before that um, as well. So. They were changing leadership roles um, throughout uh, while we were in the course. Um, so everybody could have a certain form of leadership um, while you were uh, there assigned to leadership course training. And, and you'd have to go to school and learn about leadership type of, of things as well. Um, and that's where, um, aside from the everyday stuff, but they, they teach you how to do certain leadership type of activities to help develop you into a better leader. Because with um, as you progress into the E5 or sergeant position, um, you essentially do have to lead at some point in time. There would be certain uh, uh, training scenarios or certain everyday leading that you'll have to do with soldiers beneath you. So um, the point I'm trying to get to in this story is that um, as you kind of progress, there's, uh, like I said, it would be a first sergeant in charge of all the platoons. Um, and I was given the responsibility for the closing uh, weeks, I think it was a week or two, um, where I was first sergeant. And um, I remember I was a specialist and then fulfilling in what in, in the real army what would be an E8 position. Um, but since we were in this uh, leadership course, I would, I would basically wear something on my sleeve, dictating me as an E8, even though my rank on my chest was an E4. So... Um, as I was going to, um, <clears throat> as I was doing this, you know, I was selected from everybody within my uh, platoon to um, best reflect the platoon leadership. Um, so they picked me for first sergeant, and uh, I remember they gave me a book, um, and I was like, cool, it'll have a bunch of stuff on uh, on leadership, and it had a bunch of stuff on cleaning the barracks. Um, it was a very humbling experience. So I was in charge of organizing all the cleaning for the barracks, uh, both inside and out. Um, and it's, uh, it was a very humbling experience. Um, but I remember as we did the uh, uh, change of responsibility, um, and this change of command when you involve all officers, but since we were just all uh, non commissioned officers, it was a change of responsibility. Um, and then I was able to wear the first sergeant rank on my sleeve for quite some time. Um, and as we did that, I. Um, as soon as that ceremony was done and we were closing out for the day, a bunch of people come up to me because the classes mixed up from E4s, E5s, and there was even some E6s coming up to me 
and trying to give me their best advice on how the organization should be ran. Uh, and I took all the input and, and thought it was great and all well and, and, and told them thank you for the advice. But it, it, it fitted so perfectly with this talk today that everybody has, and I wrote it down here, everybody has a good idea on how you can do your job better. And I find that so true that everybody wants to be a director. Um, everybody wants to that position, but nobody wants a responsibility. And they'll come up to you and whisper in your ear about doing things and try to make uh, uh, alliances or, or, or form what I would call cliques um, just so they can be on the good side of things because they gave you the advice. And I would always appreciate their advice, but I'd take it with a grain of salt and do things that I thought would be um, – that would best reflect the uh, – the, the group but and it still holds true in the civilian world everybody's got these bright ideas and as I'm learning about the responsibility and the uh, business management portion of the business that I'm currently working in um, it's very um, everybody's got a great idea everybody's got uh, something that will make your business be more successful or maybe you should do this or maybe you should do that if it was simple and what I tell people if it was simple everybody would do it if there was one uh, thing for success, everybody would do it. It would be simple. Everybody would be successful, but that is not the case. And things are ever changing on a constant basis. And if you're not adapting to those changes, then you're just going to be left behind, regardless of what uh, potential that you hold, what potential you don't hold. Uh, and if your business is not doing well, they typically uh, uh, blame like these top three things like it wasn't well funded there are bad market conditions and um uh what was the other one that they didn't have the uh the following um and i don't i i can't remember the third one to the t but um <clears throat> there was a uh, i was watching these uh these educational talks on these people that um there wasn't necessarily like the Wright brothers. They didn't have uh, the perfect conditions for something to be successful. They didn't have the New York Times following them. They didn't have uh, investment bankers following them. And there was this other uh, guy at the same time who um, didn't have the uh, the who had all the right things. The market conditions were right. He had the News Times uh, or, or the New York Times following him, and he was well funded. And he couldn't come up with the end result of uh, creating a, a aircraft that could fly. It was the Wright brothers that did it with all the bad things. And it just has to do with um, uh, one of the most successful business practices that I've noticed and that I find true. And I will credit this to um, Simon Sinek. Um, I watched a couple of his TED Talks, uh, and I think that's how you pronounce his name. Um, forgive me if I'm wrong. But he said that people don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. Um, and I hold this very true. They don't buy. Everybody knows what you do. But they, you know uh, why you do what it is that you do. Why you participate in a particular business or organization you work at. Why is it that you do that? If you don't know your why, there's a very high um, possibility that you, you could be in the wrong business. One, two, not performing well. There just could be a lot more different things going on and um, it's it's this big people don't necessarily people don't buy what you do um, they buy why you do it and there's so many different ways to picture this but um, the way that uh, Simon used um, was that uh, that Apple as they were there seemed to be successful and it was because of their marketing strategies and relating why to the customer not what they do um, of course they sell computers and phones and all these other things but there's plenty of other companies out there that can do the same thing they can offer the same what they can offer computers and cell phones and other things but why is it that apple is successful it's because they tune into the why they they have a model to think different to be a part of the change to challenge the status quo and all these other things that put you in tune with the why um, and not their what. Um, and if you're in tune with a person's why, you're just more likely to have uh, a backing, even though that some things may be good or bad or or they had televisions that weren't necessarily successful, um, but people still bought into the idea because of their why. 
and it's not the the what that people are interested in. Yeah, you can go like I work in the bar industry. You can go anywhere and get a drink, but why are you coming to my establishment? What kind of atmosphere are we creating? To get you into that establishment and is it a positive atmosphere or a positive experience or a negative ex experience all these things I'm thinking about as uh, things start to develop into a managerial type of experiences for me um, it gets me to more to think more clearly about the why of this organization that I'm participating in and not the what that we're offering obviously we're offering um, alcohol at times or beverages or drinks and we can offer music and things, but getting getting down to the why, painting, getting people in tune with the why, um, really building that rapport with people, I think is more critical. Creating that friendly environment that people can come to, have a good time, and 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 relax, unwind, and be that type of environment. I think that will paint more of a picture to the why, and not necessarily the what. And then the, some somewhere along between the why and the what is the how. Obviously, how you do things, how you. Uh, prepare your drinks um, and that's uh, goes hand in hand with the why but the why is truly what gets people to walk in through the door not the what um, you can buy cars anywhere why am I going to your dealership um, and and it, please I, I believe wholeheartedly with Simon's theory that it's the why and if you think otherwise prove to me why you think it's it's something different um, because I'm, I'm just Think of his theories and the models, and, and, and he's saying how it's branded into our biology um, to think this way and to act this way and to mimic the behaviors just because we're, we're, we're like that. We need to be human beings that are in tune with a particular thing to, to, to follow it, um, and I firmly believe that. Um, and to wrap this back into, I know I got off on a little bit of a tangent there, but I'm so passionate about this wine. I truly do think that it's a, a it should be used in somewhat of a business model, a business perspective, because you can have everything perfect, the perfect market conditions, the perfect funding, the perfect uh, uh, following, and just like the person who is competing with the Wright brothers, if their heart isn't in it, then they're not, they're not going to be successful. Your heart has to be in it, your, and this has to be a passion for it to work for you, and your why has to be tied to that. Um, the the Wright brothers had a passion for doing this. This was they thought it would bring global change if they did it. And regardless, they would they would use the money from the the working odd jobs and doing things to to make their dreams come true. And that's why they did it. That's why they were first to fly. Um, and and they challenged everything. But if you listen to a lot of business owners today who have failed, they they give you those top three conditions. Oh, the marketing conditions were right. I didn't have the proper funding or 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 proper uh, uh, investment or, or I didn't have a good following you can create all those things if your why is intact but um, to get back to everybody wants to be a director I noticed this in this we get people all the time coming through our doors at work and have these think that their ideas are so grandiose and so um, next level like they haven't been thought of before and, and I mean no disrespect to my customers uh, and the customers that do walk through the door but I, I understand it's a matter of why everybody has these ideas of what you should offer and that is the wrong approach I think if it was as easy as what you should offer why don't we have people lining up through the doors to to buy drinks uh, or to buy food and it's not has to, it, it doesn't have anything to do with what we're offering it's why we're offering it and if we can't get people in tune with our why, if we don't understand our why, then everybody else's idea, everybody else is trying to be a director of what would work has no impact on it. Because if it were that simple, why don't you, uh, for, to, for me to be blunt here, why don't you do it, set it up yourself and do it if, if you truly wholeheartedly believe that that's as easy as it is. Um, because that tends not to be the case. Um, and I truly firmly believe that. So. I don't want to go too much more on the tangent here. I'm approaching uh, a little over 14 minutes, going to be approaching 15 here. But the takeaway is is everybody's always got a better idea of how you can do things. Go with what your gut feeling is and, and, and stick to your why you do something. Don't necessarily let other people influence your decisions or your decision-making process based off of, of what they think they should do. If they're not talking to you about why you should do what you do, um, then they probably have a little bit, uh, uh, I don't want to say a lack of intelligence, but um, a, a lack of understanding for 
what it is that drives customers through yours. I don't believe it's what you offer because we have a lot of companies offering the same different things. It's what separates you from that company, the why. Um, and that's what gets people through the doors. I wholeheartedly believe that. And if other people are directing you to other things, um, I, I had a theory um, at one point in time where maybe you should let other people try these different theories just to prove them wrong. But in order to save yourself some time and heartache, why not just narrow down your why and find people who agree with you why? And that will be a good stable source of income for you and them. And not only that, but you create a bond in a community that doesn't necessarily exist in any other place. And that's why I think that people will come into your establishment, not necessarily what you offer or, or how you offer it, how it plays an important part too, but why you offer it. Um, and connecting with the person on that why level will, will I think, um, have a better impact on, on doing that. So that'll be it for the uh, third vlog here. I'll be putting another one up here shortly since I'm after 12, um, talking about some experience of this evening at work um, and having to do with leadership um, as well. But um, I appreciate you guys watching, liking, commenting, subscribing. I'm very passionate about this uh, why information. If you guys have any questions at all, or if you see me out and about, you want to ask me questions about this why theory, I'm more than happy to um, explain to you in further detail, but think about it logically. Do people approach you, your business, or do you approach other people for, for what you sell or why you sell? And do successful people who sell or who have successful selling practices, um, are they more in tune with the why or are they more in tune with the what you sell? Uh, and, and see if those people are successful more because they're in tune with the why or the what. And uh, I promise you, it's, it's going to be more in line with the why you're offering what you're offering, not what you offer. Um, it's what makes you the difference. So I appreciate you guys watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, and I'll see you on the next one.